Hi there, Mason Marangella, the Rig Doctor. Welcome to my garage workshop here in Oakland, California. Today I'm going to be building a rig that exemplifies one of my favorite guitar players of all time, John Mayer. And we're doing it today making it as small, as compact as we possibly can in order to get m the most John Mayer per square inch that we possibly can. Now, for this, we've teamed up with Sweetwater and they've provided us all of the necessary pedals and also the platform and the pedal train, pedal board, power supply, and all that stuff to make this possible. So we wanna give a big shout out to them for giving us all this stuff to do it. And the cool thing about this whole project is actually they're allowing us to give this rig away. So the rig that we build today will actually be something that you could possibly win. And we're gonna give you a bunch more details in the description below and exactly how you can sign up to win this thing. It's very easy. And the more things that you do, the more opportunities that you have to win this rig. So do check that out in the description. And at the end of this video, we'll go in a little bit more depth on exactly what the prerequisites are. So do check that out at the end of the video. My name is Mason Marangella. I build rigs for the industry's top professionals. Now I'm teaching guitarists how to build rigs like the pros with DIY tips, easy mods, and all the tricks of the trade. I am the Rig Doctor. Thank you. All right, I've been waiting for this one. I've been sent this beautifully packed box full of pedals that we're going to be making a pedal board based on some of the favorite guitar tones that I go after. I'm a huge Stevie Ray Vaughan, John Mayer, Kenny Wayne Shepherd fan. So this is sort of the Stevie Mayer Shepherd rig where we're getting some of these classic blues rock tones and kind of using some staple pedals and trying to do it in the smallest, compact, and budget-friendly way possible. So let's look and see what we got. I got a, a mini tube screamer from Ibanez, definitely a, a winner all the way. You get your classic tube screamer sound, small compact package. Tube screamers are like pizza, it's all good. <laughs> we got uh, a Boss TU3 classic tuner. We got a J Rocket. Archer, this is perfect. Got a couple of other good things. We got, ooh, I love these. We got the Ibanez Mini Analog Delay. This thing sounds incredible. All Bucket Brigade, just the way that God intended. EP Booster. These are classics, of course. Get your nice, nice kind of a kind of Echoplex colored preamp. Really into this. This is gonna be a great addition to this board. Ooh. True Tone, I love these. These are one of my favorite switch mode power supplies. Really nice and quiet. Works anywhere in the world, so these are gonna be an excellent find. And then, the platform for it all. The Metro 16 from our friends over at Pedal Train. So I'm confident with all these things, we're gonna be able to make a great rig that's inspired by some of my favorite tones. Again, I can't thank Sweetwater enough for thinking about me to do this. So let's get into the build. We're gonna head over to my workshop here at home in the garage, and we're gonna start building this thing. I'm gonna be using all Mogami 2524 cable, as well as Switchcraft ends to put this thing together, soldering everything custom to length so that everything has the least amount of capacitance possible. Let's go and do it. Now it wouldn't be a Rig Doctor video unless we were doing a little extra special sauce to the rig. I'm gonna do a couple of things that are a little bit out of the norm that's not something you can just get off the shelf at Sweetwater. The first thing is I'm gonna take our pedal train pedal board that we're gonna be putting this on and I'm actually gonna build a custom platform to go over that. I really like to be able to build everything top side as though it was a flat board. So I have access to all the cables, I have access to all the wiring and in troubleshooting, I don't have to go back and forth between the top and the bottom in order to make sure that I have everything working. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a custom interface that's gonna allow me to have all my inputs and outputs centralized to one place on the pedal board. I like doing this because it reduces stress on any of the pedals by having to plug in and out of them. But enough of me talking about it, let's get into it. 
I'm gonna start doing the layout. We're gonna go into power, then audio, and then hear how this thing sounds. I can't wait to get started. Let's do it. To begin any rig, one of the most important things is establishing the layout. Now, we have a finite amount of space to work here with the Metro 16. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna put all of my connectors in the pedals themselves. So for example, in this Boss Tuner, I put in my right angle connectors that I'm gonna be using. I'm also gonna put in one of the pre-made power cables that I'm actually gonna cut down to length that was provided with the True Tone power supply. What this is gonna do is it's gonna tell me exactly how much space this is gonna occupy once it's connected on the board. And I'm gonna repeat this with all of the pedals. So this is kind of the approximate layout that I've come up with. I have my custom made interface in the corner. This is what everything's gonna plug in and out of. First pedal I have in the chain is gonna be my Boss TU3. I'm gonna skip over the steel string because this is a little bit too deep to put in its order in terms of the sequence. So after the tuner, it's gonna go into the mini tube screamer, to the archer, to the EP booster, then it's gonna go back to the steel string, analog delay, and then it's gonna go back to the interface to go out to the amplifier. So now I'm gonna show you my technique for adding dual lock. Now, I wanna show you on a boss pedal because I think that this is probably one of the more complicated pedals to add dual lock to. On the bottom of most boss pe pedals, ordinarily you'll have this rubber uh, kind of tread that's on the bottom. This is just to kind of give it a little bit more of a traction against a, a flat surface that might be kind of slippery. I recommend not applying dual lock to this. What I recommend doing is peeling it away and I'm pulling it off. Now, this is not a great surface to try to apply Velcro to. Some of the adhesive is still stuck on there because they are using a fairly high quality adhesive for this particular application. So this is a trick that I like to do on boss pedals that not a lot of people are aware of. First what you're going to do is you're going to remove your four screws. Once you've done that, you're going to take the bottom and you're simply just going to flip it over. Now you have a beautiful clean surface that you can mount your Velcro to and it's not going to have any issues with sticking. It's perfectly clean, no issues whatsoever. It's gonna go in nice and easily. We can just screw this right back on. So what I'm gonna to do to the dual lock is I'm gonna use the pedal itself to kind of create my spacing. I don't need to go overlapping the pedal. In fact, it tends to not look very good if you do that, and functionally, there's no more benefit. So I usually try to keep it cut in slightly from the edge as you can see, if I were to lay this flat, it's not going all the way to the edge. It's maybe inset, maybe a quarter of an inch. And for something like this, two strips will be more than enough per side. I'm gonna put that one there, put that one there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the exact same Velcro and I'm just gonna mirror what I already cut. And I'm gonna kind of loosely put that in place over what I already have. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ensure that I'm in the placement that I want before I actually go to stick it down. And one thing you can do is you can take a pencil and just kind of, just barely trace out kind of the edges. So I kind of know my rough area where it's gonna be. I'm gonna peel off the adhesive and I'm just gonna line up with my pencil markings. And I'm just kind of wiggling it, making sure that the bottom side is stuck. And now I have that exactly where I need it to be on the bottom. It's mirrored to the top. I'm gonna line it back up and with dual lock, you'll hear the lock. And this isn't going anywhere. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna repeat with all the other pedals, make sure that they're in place, following the exact same technique. I won't have to peel off the bottom of them like I did on the boss pedals. These are a little simpler in that regard, but I thought I'd show you the most difficult one, and then we work to the easiest ones from there. Actually need to physically wire in the cables 
for the DC power into our one spot supply. Now I'm going to use the provided cables that come with the True Tone power supply and this is a really common practice that I would do even on my own pedal boards. The thing that I like to use is something called a Kobicon connector and this is Kobicon is the brand. It's a 2.1 millimeter by 2.5 millimeter barrel connector that I can solder on to the existing power cable. So I'm going to cut the power cables provided by True Tone to length and I'm going to re-terminate with this on the power supply. So I got it all soldered up. I'm just gonna feed it all back into the power supply, make sure our fit is where we want it, and uh, we'll make sure that the power is actually firing on. So we got everything in place. I got everything, as you can see, nicely dressed in to the power supply. No excess cables falling off, it's making it real pretty. But it's gonna be all for nothing if it doesn't all power up. So I'm just gonna do a quick check on that. Fingers crossed, everything comes on. Looks like we got everything coming on. We got our LEDs illuminated. And once I know that I'm good, at least to this point, what I'll do is I'll label my power supply. So if I ever have a problem down the road, I know exactly which output corresponds to which pedal. got everything labeled we know where everything is this is going to be a good troubleshooting tool for us if we ever need to do anything later on or down the road we know where everything is on the power supply we're now ready to move in to audio now what we're going to move on to are the audio cables and as you can see I've already put in all of the plugs so I kind of know the rough orientation of where things need to be what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in with some Mogami cable and I'm actually going to solder in to each one of these Switchcraft style pancake plugs. zip tie going a different way and although that has no bearing on the sound it's nice for continuity our pedal board is now complete let's see if we have signal through it we'll do a more appropriate sound check at the studio I just want to make sure that we have basic signals here so let's see what we got seen the build, you've seen the attention to detail that we put into this thing, hand wired, all the cables, all the connections as far as the DC, power, the audio, all that giving you the very very best of the best quality stuff, some great pedals that in a compact size deliver on the Mayer, SRV, some of my favorite types of tones, and delivers it on the pedal train Metro 16. 
so you get some compact, the most mayor tones per square inch that you can possibly get. So I think that people are going to dig that. All Mogami cable, true tone power supply, and some of my favorite compact pedals and just pedals overall that really help capture that tone without breaking the bank. Now, if you'd like to win this pedal board, we're going to be giving it away in collaboration with Sweetwater, and it's really, really easy to enter. You're going to go to our website, and we have a link down below, and it gives you all the options for entry. And basically, for everything that you do, you get entered one time into the drawing for the winner. So if you do multiple things, like say, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to us on YouTube, and like us on Facebook, that would give you three points, three different entries into the drawing for the winner. So the more things you do, the more opportunities you'll have to win. So do check out the link and sign up below. And please do check out these pedals on Sweetwater's website. Your sales engineers will not only have these devices, but also even other variations of these if you want to go up or down in budget that are all going to sound great and deliver on the John Mayer tone. So please do ask your Sweetwater sales engineer about the pedals that will best suit your budget in order to achieve those tones. Also, if you're interested in learning more about the things that we do, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. We have lots of DIY tutorials like we did in building this rig, lots of tips around how to get tones of a lot of famous artists, including John Mayer and SRV and other types of artists that we're big fans of, just like you are, so do check that out. Also feel free to check out our podcast where we take the things that we talk about here and we invite on other guests and have conversation around technical stuff, around best types of tones to get different sorts of artist sounds at different price points. We talk about technique, we talk about all different sorts of things regarding tone, so do check that out on Apple and Spotify and all the podcatchers out there. And if you want to get some coaching with me, The Rig Doctor, we actually offer a variety of services through Patreon where you can get more in-depth information around how to troubleshoot your rig and different DIY tips and tutorials that are specified just for you, either through email or through Skype or through Zoom. And we even have a free account option, which has no means testing required, that allows you to have access to weekly AMAs that we do on YouTube and weekly live streams as well. So do check that out on Patreon. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella, The Rig Doctor. See you.